Well, g'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the home studio today. Still in a little bit of lockdown, they call it stage three here in Australia, but trying to stay positive. And I said in a video about three or four days ago that I put out that I was gonna do one on the HD60S Plus as a live streaming setup. And if you can hear any noise out the back, it's just because family are doing their thing today as well. Uh, so I'm just going with it. And basically the HD60 S Plus is like a 4K um, gaming streamer. And so right now I'm recording on this camera in front of me here. Also recording on a camera that's above here. Um, and because I want to sort of show you my setup. So yeah, I just wanted to take you through my setup and basically how I've set this up in OBS, how I'm running this. You might hear some fan noise at the moment because normally my computer's right here. So normally you wouldn't have uh, the mic so close in a live stream setup. You'd be kind of away, a bit further away from the talent and they'd be either mic to the lavalier or with the overhead boom. So I've got the overhead boom mic here. And so you might be able to hear a little bit of fan noise, but that's just because I'm running OBS. I'm recording in OBS, which is saying 14.5% uh, on my um, CPU and I can show you this screen as well when I record this and also I'm doing a screen capture as well at the same time so I'm running my CPU pretty hard to get this info out to you but basically I wanted to take you through how I set this up in OBS let me just show you how this might work in a live stream scenario first and foremost so basically I got my keyboard here and I've mapped the different camera angles that I've set up with one, two, and three. So I've got one as this shot you're seeing right now. If I cut to shot two, sorry, I have to jump to the studio mode here. So you'll now be able to see uh, my screen here and the monitors that I'm looking at. And I can see I'm recording and I'm enabled on the screen one at the moment. So now if I cut to my scene two, wants to let me do that. There we go, finally cut to my scene two. I had to be active on that screen, particularly on this studio preview monitor or whatever it is. So now I'm on screen two and I'll cut to screen three, or sorry, camera three, which is this camera above. And you can see here, when I cut back to camera two, if I hit two right now, it's gonna cut back to this tight shot and one is gonna cut out to my wide shot. So what I've got here is actually just a single lens. It's a layer with 12 millimeter zero D D Dreamer in 4K on the EOS R. And I've got that uh, pumping out a 4K image into OBS. And then this one is basically just a scaled up piece of that image. So it's the scaled up version of that image. So it's like I've got the two shots and you know, if I'm doing a live stream like this, or if there's content where I'm filming someone and they need to have a wider shot, they can be giving detail like this to camera and then hit camera one and we can go out to a wider shot to show the scene or whatever it is they're doing. So that gives you the option to have two shots from just a single camera. So yeah, let me jump into OBS and show you the setup of this and how I've got it running and see if it's gonna work for you to do something similar to this. Um, just a note as well about the camera above is I'm actually running that on the original Elgato Cam Link. So that's just a 1920 signal coming off another EOS R above. So that is this shot that you can see here. And you know, it's great because you've, I've got the EOS R which has got really good autofocus. So for example, something like this, um, when it does decide to focus, you know, I can focus on something like that, put it down, and then, you know, the focus comes back to um, my shot here. So you'll know this, uh, this is a little bit, a little bit uh, overexposed there for my shot, but I've exposed for this scene here. So basically you would know this ball because this ball I actually got one time a couple of years ago when I did a passion project. And so I'm just seeing if that will focus. Yeah, okay, that's focusing there. But yeah, anyway, it's a little bit overexposed. But yeah, I got this ball at a um, a missions trip that I did a couple of years ago to Nicaragua, and that was a passion project. And I do those passion projects, and I hope to be able to do them in the future as well once all this COVID 19 stuff calms it down just a little bit more than it is right now. And if you're in America right now and friends in New York and, and those who are in 
areas that are really getting hammered by this thing, I just, my heart goes out to you. I really pray for you and your families and just hope that everything is all right and really stay safe. Don't take any risks. Just stay safe. Hibernate as much as you can and, you know, do creative work and just, just keep safe until all this is behind us. Uh, and if you've had family or loved ones that have, yeah, been affected by this, then my heart goes out to you. Sincerely, um, hope everything is going well in your world. But let's jump now into OBS on the screen. I'll show you kind of how I've got this set up and how I'm running this. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna do this with it still recording, but let's just jump in and see if it'll let me. So here is the OBS screen. And basically I've got in here the four scenes. I have another scene mapped to my, um, my fourth, um, key here so i'll actually just show you that before we jump in here so scene four is just basically a image basically it's a static image and i've got that so that you when you start your stream you can have that up or at the end of your stream you can just put up a um an image like that so that's kind of what i have so you know if you're streaming like this but you want something to be playing before you can have like a pre-roll or you can have like at the end of your stream, you can say, you know, thank you for coming to live stream. So that's all good. And OBS works with all of that as well. So you can also have a mute key to mute that. So as soon as that screen comes up, you can mute all the mics out. So there's no bleed through the audio, you know, into the stream once the stream is finished. So that's a really cool feature as well. But back to the uh, setup within OBS. So basically I'll just take you through my scene. So scene one here, I've got the HD 60. And if I just click on the settings here, and I don't think it is gonna let me do this. Um, I didn't think of this. Let me stop the recording um, just for now because I'm still recording on this camera and this camera and I should still be capturing the screen share as well. So basically now if I jump into the H60 settings, here is my main settings. I've got the game capture card there and the preset is high. So I use the high preset. Now on the EOS R, I've got it set to HDR streaming or HDR via HDMI. And also I've got it set to HDMI at, um, I think auto, so that it does push through the auto. But as you can see here, um, one thing I'll mention as well is in my video output settings, I actually have 1920 by 960. I really like how that fits into an iPhone screen on YouTube and I like how it kind of crops a little bit, looks a little bit more cinematic. So I've got it set to 1920 by 960. So that's a really good thing there. Uh, so anyway, basically back into the settings of this. So that's the settings there, the game capture and I've got the high preset. Now I don't use buffering because I find that my computer handles things okay. So you can use buffering if you want it to basically record this, record it first and then buffer and then when you're exporting that as a stream, it will actually delay it a little bit just so it can catch up if there is dropped frames or something. So it's good if you are dropping frames, if your computer isn't solid enough or your internet connection isn't solid enough, then to buffer the stream works, but it does lower quality a little bit and sometimes it gets a little bit jigsaw puzzly looking, uh, but that, that works um, if you need that. So that's really good. Um, so that's the HD60 um, and if I show you here, basically what I've got is I can get this image and I can see drag this image. So basically this is my 4K signal coming from the EOS R out of the HDMI via the um, HD60S. So that's all set up, good to go. Uh, and you just, I just get this and just drag this all the way edge to edge. And then I kind of frame my headroom here to make it you know, correct for the scene. So that's the HD60S, the main camera A, let's call that. Now my tight shot is the same exact camera. So it's the HD60S. And again, same capture um, same capture card. If you click on this, you can see all your capture cards there. So I've got the cam link, which is the one above, and I've got the HD60S Plus. Number four, I don't know why it's put that number four there, but I've just added it a few times. So it's just putting a different number next to it there. Uh, use preset again, the high preset again, so I know I'm getting through the best quality footage there uh, again. So, and then all I've got is I've scaled this right up. So it comes in, you know, the same, this sort of size. And then all I've done is I've just taken it and scaled it up to where I think 
is a good tight shot with good amount of headroom and then I just jump back and forward between the two just to make sure that I feel like there's a good cut between the two. It's not too jarring or doesn't jump, my head doesn't jump across the frame, you know, from this tight shot to, um, to the wider shot. So that's kind of how I've set that up. I can actually just tweak this wide shot here like that. So that's my tight shot and my wide shot. And then my overhead shot is simply just this shot here. I'll straighten that keyboard a little bit. Yeah, it's just this shot here and that is the video capture device. And if I jump into the settings for that, um, you will see it is the cam link. So that's all that is. And again, I'm using the high preset on the cam link. This is set to 1080p output. So that's outputting uh, 1080p so that basically, um, yeah, I'm getting what I need from that uh, in the best possible resolution I can get out of camera. So now I do have the ISO cranked a little bit more on this shot. So this shot may be a little bit more grainy than that one, but I, I've got an ND filter on as well that I just didn't take off. So that was one of the reasons you could probably get a cleaner shot here, but for the purposes of this, I just made it like that. So that is pretty much the setup in OBS um, and then in the settings over here and I'll just start the recording again so that I'm recording this whole stream uh, within OBS. So the settings uh, within OBS, uh, I'll take you through those. General settings, I didn't really make many changes to the general settings. I didn't need to make many changes to that. The stream, now this is if you've got um, YouTube or if you have a streaming software, Vimeo. So you basically put in your stream key uh, and you know you get all that information from your streamer. So YouTube is the one I use. So my YouTube stream link is in there and that's where you put that. So that's the main thing for that. Now the output here, I've kind of got this set to work with my internet connection speed. So the bigger your upload speed for the internet, the more you can have in terms of a um, kilobits per second upload. So I, I could probably have, you know, 10,000, I know Matty Hapoya and a few other guys run 10,000 plus. I'd like to be able to do that, but my upload speed is a bit irregular. So to stop from dropping frames and buffering too much, I kind of have this as low as I can, which doesn't give me a super good quality stream, but it's still it's locked on and people really get value from it when I've streamed like this before. So it's all good. Um, and then I don't need to rescale output because I'm, I'll show you where my video output is. I'm telling uh, OBS to rescale my output. So base canvas resolution is 3840 by 1920, which is my aspect 1920 by 960 doubled. And that's the basically the canvas that I'm running. And then I'm exporting that as an uh, downscaled resolution to 1920 by 960. And I probably could get away with streaming like a 1440 output as well if I wanted to, perhaps even a 3840 by 1920 stream, but it just buffers so much more and just choose more juice from the whole computer system and everything. So I'd rather just offer my clients the 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 960 um, to make sure I can handle it all with their internet connection wherever I might be um, using this as well. So the downscale filter is just the bicubic sharpening, uh, sharpen scaling and 16 samples and I've found that to be fine. And then my frames per second is 30. So really key thing about this is I don't know why, but it seems as though 30 frames per second is like works well It's kind of the middle ground for this. So this camera set to 29.97, that camera set to 29.97. The computer is then set to 30 frames per second output. So that's the output stream. It just seems to hold the stream better. Um, for us, there's issues sometimes with flicker in Australia at 30, but it seems to be working well for me with these settings. So that's that. So back to output again, you've got all that. Now I choose very fast here um, for the CPU um, usage preset, and this is higher equals less CPU. So I try and get it pretty high so it's not gonna churn my CPU. I'd rather my CPU be used to um, give me a better bit rate for my recording or a better bit rate for the stream. So um, constant bit rate, and I set this to a keyframe interval of two, and that's recommended by OBS as well. So that's how I have that set. I have the CPU usage set to uh, very fast. I said that already. Uh, no profile on this and no tune on this. So this footage is coming directly out of camera with the standard picture profile. I do a few tweaks on that. I think I turn sharpness up to two and I find that the color shifts a little bit through OBS. So I also up the saturation by two and I up the um, contrast. I think I take the contrast down by two. 
So sharpness up to contrast down to saturation up to one or two depends. You might like a de more desaturated look, but I kind of like a nice saturated look. So this then I don't need to worry about applying anything later, but you can apply things later in OBS as well. And then the X, uh, X264 options, I don't worry about including any of those. I just let this do it. And I think at the moment it is streaming in an MP4 codec, H264, yeah, here, sorry, H264 um, MP4 codec. So now over to recording, which I'm recording right now. So this is all working for me. So I'm recording my output right now at 5,000 kilobits per second, and that will give me an okay quality image. Also recording on both cameras, and I'll probably use that overlaid in the edit. Uh, you'll see this edit once, I'm edit once I've edited it. But yeah, basically I'll probably overlay the raw footage from these two cameras, but the rest of it I'll keep as per the stream, um, as per this recording as well. So again, I've got it locked in at two keyframe interval and very fast, and the profile is high which will then give me a better looking final image um, yeah, out of, out of the box. So audio is just 160 audio bit rate um, and I'm, I've locked it in to only record this one track. So you're hearing basically what uh, OBS is hearing. And so even if I switch cameras, OBS is still only gonna be recording uh, this stuff there. So yeah, that's kind of how it all set up. The replay buffer I don't enable, but sometimes you can enable that um, to allow it to, again, uh, help you to buffer if you're having problems with the stream buffering or dropping frames, that kind of thing. Audio, which is 44.1 kilohertz stereo, and then I've got everything disabled, and the mix auxiliary audio is coming from the game catcher. So what I've got with the audio setup, this is a big, a lot of information, I know, but stay with me because really, really great once you get this set up and running really well. So audio setup, I've got HD 60S Plus, HDMI, now this is going by USB 3 or USB-C, I suppose it is, um, into a, um, it's like a CalDigit um, capture, like a um, interface, but you can hear my son, he's just racing through the house at the moment, um, and he's waking up his little sister, so that's why he's in trouble right now. But basically the, um, the and I'll show you actually, I can show you this, um, in this, scene but I'll just pull it up here so I can see what I'm doing let me just pull this up for you here and it's cool all right so basically um, this here is going for this kind is coming from the camera this is a mini HDMI to HDMI and this is going and this is the game capture device so this actually has a throughput out you know this would go out to this would come from the monitor that you're capturing and go out to the um, yeah into the monitor so this kind of captures the monitor stream um, but we don't need the output for this setup because we're working on it you know as a um, as a camera capture device not a game capture device uh, and just to talk about that before I go into this where this is all plugged in this was actually available and it was a bit of a gamble that it was actually going to work because all the cam links are sold out at the moment because everybody is trying to do live streaming. Lots of churches I know are doing live streaming. And so pretty much all the H, uh, all the Elgato cam links are sold out pretty much everywhere at the moment. So that's where you, if you can pick one of these up or get one of these secondhand, that can work for you just to get this up and running. And that's what I did as well. So anyway, so the, the, Canon, um, the Canon cable here, you can see this is going out to a Thunderbolt interface, but you could just go straight Thunderbolt into your computer with that. And the cam link is the same. The cam link is an old USB 3, or USB 2, sorry. That's going directly into the computer via a Thunderbolt 3. I think it's Thunderbolt 3, isn't it? Or USB-C connector. So that goes from USB 2 to USB 3 into the computer. So that's kind of all of, that's kind of all of that setup. And yeah, I think this is a really good setup. Um, what else was I explaining there? So that was the setup for that. Uh, back to OBS now and show you the final steps here as well in OBS. So we'll go into settings again. And we were at video, weren't we? We were at audio here. So yeah, anyway, the Game Capture HD60S, that's what I was saying, is going through my boom microphone here. It's an NTG2. Uh, and that goes down to my audio interface and then I'm exporting or like sending that audio out of a headphone jack 
out of the headphone jack and into my camera. So what you're hearing is the audio from the camera A. And it's all because the stream and the audio, sometimes there's a buffer that happens and then the audio breaks away from the video. Putting this audio from here and into the camera itself means that via HDMI, I'm receiving that audio and the video is always locked. So this camera A, I know, is always gonna be locked onto the audio. So no matter what happens with the stream, if it buffers or drop frames, when it comes back online, it's always gonna be synced. And so I would encourage you to do that as well. So make sure that whatever A cam you're going to, like let's call this shot the safe shot, safe cam, then that's the audio that I'm going to use. Uh, and it's gonna come from the actual source of the video. So the video footage is always gonna be embedded with the audio, so if the stream drops or you have lost, lost frames or drop frames, when it comes back online, it's all gonna be in sync. So nothing worse than losing sync on a stream over a period of time and people commenting and saying, oh, you know, it's not in sync. So that's a really good point to keep in mind. And then all I've got is I'm just telling uh, Camlink, uh, sorry, telling OBS to make sure that it's using that audio for every single shot. So even if I cut to the different shots, um, you know, as I go, uh, the, uh, the OBS is going to mm. default to that uh, audio. So that's really good. And then, uh, so then I don't need to do any delay here. So I've got no delays and no mutes or anything like that because I've just got this one stream of audio. Cool video, I've shown you that already. Now, the hotkeys, this is really cool because this is where I've got set up um, to basically have my different scenes. So scene one is hotkey one, uh, letter uh, number one. Scene two, number two. Scene three, number three. That's as easy as it is. And scene four is number four. And then I've got an S and a H, so show and hide. So I can have that come up or drop to black if I want to. Um, with show and hide. Now there's mutes and unmutes that you can add in here as well. And so sometimes, say for example, if I had that my first shot and then I was cutting to a media piece and I wanted to cut the main audio so that it goes to the media piece or the video and plays that video to the audience and I want to talk on set or the talent or the person I'm filming, they want to talk on set, then I make sure I mute the mic. So what I can do there is I can set my mute to be uh, trigger with the same key that triggers the audio, uh, triggers the media. So say if I muted it on key number two, then when I cross to that um, that media piece, hit two and it would mute my mic. So it would mute this mic and just go to the audio. And then when I come back, I have three, which is my next scene. I have that unmute at three. So when I hit three, it not only brings scene three, but it also unmutes the audio. So I've had that set up before and that works really well. As long as you're going from one to eight, you know, in your scenes, you're not going back to different scenes. You just go from one to eight in your scenes and that seems to work really well as well. All right, and then in advanced settings, I actually don't touch any of these settings. Um, yeah, I do add an automatic reconnect um, after 10 seconds and it will try 20 times. That's just if the stream drops out or there's a big network failure. Um, so I can jump back onto a dead stream and just say, hey, sorry, it's, you know, sorry, it's dropped out or whatever. If, if it will reconnect, I can jump back on and just explain what's happened. Um, so I've just got that set up. But otherwise, that's all uh, standard. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much everything. I'm just trying to think if I've covered everything with that. I've shown you how to set up OBS. Um, I've shown you how to, I guess the stream setup is different, that's all within YouTube. So go onto YouTube to find out that. And depending on your clients as well, they might use Vimeo or a different streaming service. So I know this uh, particular client that I'm setting all this up for are going to be using Vimeo and Vimeo has got its own live stream partner. So a live stream application partner. So this OBS will be fed into their live stream uh, application. Um, so, and that will be the way that they stream it up online. But that's everything to do with how all this is set up. Go out and get yourself one of these, the HD 60S Plus. It works perfectly as a um, 4K, um, you know, cam link kind of thing for your camera, yeah, as long as you're exporting a clean feed. And I would recommend the uh, EOS R's as awesome cameras for this because the standard picture profile looks great and yeah, everything set up is really good. Another really great thing is that these cameras, they can continuously record, uh, they can continuously output 
HDMI signal as long as you've got battery. So you could have dummy batteries as well plugged into the wall to continue to stream. But basically what happens is they've got a 30 second, a 30 minute time limit when they turn off. But what you can do is you can set that to never. So the screen will um, basically turn off, but the camera will continue to run. So I've successfully run streams longer than 30 minutes um, with these cameras and they work really well. The stream, the, the image on the actual um, preview monitors goes off, turns off, but the stream stays live. So you've just got to trust that it's going to stay live, trust that you've got the settings correct in camera and, and, and have the display um, sleeps, I think it's never, display sleep never you have to have. So whilst um, also having not recording on the cameras at the same time. So having the recording off on the cameras and just having the cameras as dummies to send you the live stream signal. All right, you guys, well, that is everything from me. Hopefully you got value from this and yeah, um, let me know in the comments if you had any further questions, if this kind of raises more questions than it answered, and then I'm happy to answer all of your questions down below in the comments. And I'll put links to the HD60S Plus, to the Camlink 4K and some of the cabling and stuff that I've used as well. Uh, if you want a consultation or a Skype call or a Zoom or anything to, for me to help you set this up, let me know. I'm offering consultations on this and I'll be using this in the field in the coming weeks as well, this whole setup. So hopefully that's helpful and subscribe if you got value from the content. Give it a thumbs up for me. Stay safe out there. Be positive. We're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this together. All right. See you in the next one. Bye for now.